everyone, it's Jen, also known as Quirks and Stitches. A little bit different of a video today. I just wanted to kind of hop on and explain a little bit of what you can expect from the 2023 planner versions that have been released. Uh, things are a little bit different this year. In the past, I've had released a base version and then some add-on packs and then a... Um, a digital version as well. It meant that the digital version was very um, kind of limited because it contained everything. So if you were just interested in kind of dabbling with digital planning or weren't interested in tracking your inventories but wanted to track your calendars, it didn't give you the option for that. So I took some time this year to kind of break it all down. So I have four versions of the planners available in either printable or um, the PDF digital version. I'm going to be utilizing the PDF to show you everything that's in the features this year, but just know that most of, of it is mirrored. Um, the only pages that aren't going to be available in the printable that are available in the digital are going to be the ones that are more photo heavy. Um, so I've got some photo albums and some storage uh, inventory tracking that is specific to like things that you would want to have a photograph of. So it's a little bit um, different there, but otherwise they mirror each other pretty similarly. Um, so I am using my iPad. I do not have an Android device to show you. However, this is compatible with um, PDF annotation softwares that would work on um, an Android. So like I believe Note Shelf is one or Zodo. Um, there's some different ones out there. So you can see if your device, your tablet is going to be one that would work with it. With the digital though, it is designed to work um, as a with a pencil that you can write with. Um, you can do text boxes if you don't have the iPads with a pencil or another stylus of that sort for the Android or whatever other tablets there are. I'm definitely an Apple girl, um, but it is designed to do writing on. Um, there isn't a whole lot of sorting availability in this type of software because it is just a PDF. It's a, it's a blank page that you're kind of writing on. However, with the digital, there's been the ability to add in links, which is what all the little dividers and different things like that are. Um, so, that being said, I'm using GoodNotes. Um, I'm going to just go ahead back and I'll show you how to import into GoodNotes. And you're just going to want to make sure that you have the app downloaded. So go into the app um, and it will bring up your starting screen. You're going to want to hit new, hit import, and then you're going to, to add whatever program or not program, I keep saying that, whatever um, download that you have purchased or that you have. I actually use this for all of my patterns that I'm stitching from now. It took me a long time, but I am on board with that. You're just going to go ahead and click um, whatever you want to add in and it's going to import it in for you. It will save it there as a separate file. So if you write on these pages, it's not going to write on the original file that you have um, everything kind of downloaded on. So you've got a safe backup copy as well. So it will add there and then it will come up here. This slot row up here is going to show you everything that you have open in GoodNotes right now. And I'm going to go ahead and just close that one. Um, and we're going to start with the basics. So like I said, there are four versions available of this. You're gonna be able to purchase either just the basics, basics plus calendar, basics plus trackers, or basics, trackers, and everything, uh, calendar, which is everything that's available out there. Um, and again, the printable version offers the same. Um, they are laid out in an eight by for the printable. If you download, if you purchase that, you're gonna get a file that looks like this. Uh, it is designed to be printed double-sided. So when you start flipping through, you're gonna notice um, the two page layout is gonna have a page that has the, the color on this side and then the color on this side. So it's gonna be a layout design. So because of that, there are some duplicative pages um, as you're going through, for instance, like the perpetual calendar is designed so you're going to see a page here and then you're going to see a page here um, so when you get to like whips and things like that or like the yearly habit tracker I offered two of them so it would give you a complete spread when you download the printable you're going to get a, a um, if you purchase the printable 
everything or inventories, you're also going to get a packet that will do some floss inventories for you. I didn't add this into the actual file because not everybody uses every single supplier. So I wanted it to be kind of pick and choose who you wanted to print, but you have um, access to print pre-filled in lists from Classic Color Works, Color and Cotton, DMC, Gentle Arts, NPI, Weeks Dye Works, as well as a blank file for anything that you're going to just want to add in for yourself. Again, this is all also included in the inventories for any of the digital versions that you purchase. Okay, we're going to go back to just the basics now. You can see on this side there are um, six sections here, about 223. Um, this says monthly. This is going to be the, the marathons. That clock is going to take you there. And then on the basics and the calendar version, you're going to see a one and a two there. That is because um, it was a lot easier for me to keep those dividers in there uh, without having to retake them out and kind of figure out, change all the links and, and do that. So you've got two blanks, um, extra dividers you can do. Each one of these would link you to a different divider section. Also here you can indicate like what you want to put in that section and what you want to store there. Um, so for instance, say you're participating in another challenge group um, and you want to be able to store your tracker for that too. You could indicate that you are doing perhaps like WIPCO or something like that. You could indicate that there. At the end of the section, um, you can either flip through like this or you can um, click eight and go to the very end. At the end of each of the sections is a blank layout page. You can duplicate this page. Um, so if you go into this little section, it's going to bring up all the pages. You can duplicate this. And then I'm just going to move it. Oops, sorry about that. I'm just going to go ahead, hold it down, move it to whatever section I would like it in. I'm going to put it after section one. And now when I click section one, there's a blank page for me to add anything in that I would like to. So there are two sections there straight for you to do. Um, the calendar sections, if you click, and each one of the um, sections up here is also going to have a page that includes what is in the section as well as those um, individual make it your own. So you're going to have that option for any of these as well. It will have that blank page at the very end just in case you want to match style. Um, it's something that I like, but it may not be necessary for everyone. Um, so again, this is just the base version. So uh, on the everything and the inventory one, you're going to see that this gray section will indicate that's your stash and this brown section is going to be all the extras. But um, the sections up here will be very similar. So in 2023, you can click, these are not clickable, but all over here are. Um, you can click through and you're going to see, you're going to have the color code for it. You're also going to have the yearly calendar. Something else to note is I did have some folks that were asking me if they if the, it would be possible to have a Monday week start. Um, so you're going to have two download files for any of the planners that you purchase. That's going to be one will be a Monday start and one will be a Sunday start. I like my Sunday starts. Um, and so that's how I have mine open. However, you can feel free to use whichever one is more um, applicable to your life and how you like to maintain things. If you purchase the calendar section, there is a perpetual calendar right after this. However, in the base version, there is not. Um, it also offers yearly habit tracking. It offers monthly focus. So I use this page a lot um, and I'll show you in the everything one when I'm filling, kind of showing you how I utilize this. Um, it also has just the monthly highlights and notes for you. Um, there's a couple challenges that I encourage you to do for the year. Again, the ABC challenge I try to do every year. I pick a, a, pat a pattern for every letter of the alphabet and try to um, finish it you know, that I, ones that I feasibly think could be finished. So I have that one filled in for next year already. Um, also a shopping challenge to be able to support the industry and shop at 12 or 24 different, um, different shops. There are expense trackers. So if you want to, I know a lot of you are just going to skip right through that. I would, but there's an itemized expense tracker as well as a regular. Um, a thing that's a little bit different in this year's is the whip section. Last year I had a whole um, like 
comprehensive web section and the current web section. And I felt that it was a little duplicative. Um, so I've kind of just, it's all just at the whips. Um, another thing that's different is to lessen the size of the file. Everything is not clickable over here right now. You can go feel free to add pages like we did before with the duplicate. Um, but there won't be links that go straight through, but you can flip through just kind of like you would with a book. Um, the, there is a section to do starts. If you purchase the inventory section, there is also a page that will um, do 2023 or not, not 2023, just next to start. Those things that you want to like have in your mind that you want to start next. And then there's also a finishes section. Um, and if you, again, if you purchase the inventory or the um, everything packet, it's going to also have a page that you can track your FFOs for the year um, if that's something that is of interest to you. Each of the months is going to mirror very closely. Um, if you purchase the calendars, you're going to have actual calendars that will come up and I will show you what will be indicated over here. This is going to be your how you link and navigate through in the calendar section. But just in the base version, um, each month gives you an option to set some goals for the month and record what stitching you're going to be doing. There's also this year we're doing, we're embracing the random. I'm trying to, I was sitting trying to think how I was going to go through my whips for the year. And I was like, I need some sort of way to organize the random because I can't be incredibly random about it because I know me, but I also want to have some sort of way to work through. So we have the acrostics are all going to be some sort of connection to random. Um, the first month is unplanned. And then there's also random words that you can do that are going to just, I used a random word generator. And maybe you want to use that to try to decide what project you're going to work on. They're not tied to any days of the year. Um, so, but like, you know, I see cemetery, I could work on any of the projects I have that have a tombstone on them. And these are totally like, however you want to use them, nobody's going to be saying that it's not a good enough connection. You then go, you've got some habits and discoveries as well as some habit trackers. Um, I like to use this page over here to track and indicate if I've stitched that day of the month. Um, and then this year, it's just a random um, a way to identify a whip to work on. So I tried to think of something that would work for anybody's stash. Um, unless you're a monogamous stitcher, it's a little harder to, to kind of make that. But um, just something that you can do to try to narrow down what you need, you want to work on for that month. Um, also a spot to list any um, new people that you've kind of found and an additional habit tracker. Also got some monthly review sheets. You can record your feelings and your goals. Go ahead and color the clock to rate your month. Um, your greatest lessons learned, the gratitudes, something you want to start doing, stop doing, continue doing. Um, and then this page was in the, the planner in the past, your favorite stitchy moments, your tweaks for next month, finishes and expenses. Then each section will also have notes, grids, and a section for photos. This will not be in the printable section. Um, it just didn't seem practical to have to waste paper for, um, I don't know how many people actually print photos out, um, but I felt like uh, you can import pictures very easily into GoodNotes. So for instance, when you go to write in GoodNotes, uh, if you want the links to be available, you have to have this button clicked. But if you unclick it, that's going to give you the options to bring everything up. Um, so if you wanted to add a picture, you just click this button. I'm going to go ahead and add a picture of one of my projects for today. Um, and I can store it right in here, put it down to the size that I want it to be. And it gives me the option to use some pictures as a little photo album here. So that's totally available to you if you want. Um, each month, like I said, goes through the same way. I am going to go ahead and switch over to my other planner if you have the calendar for portion of it, just to show you what other features are available in there. Um, in this one, you're also going to have, um, you'll see here, it's a little bit different down here. It has month, day, and week. If you click month, it's going to go ahead and take you to a two-page calendar spread for the month. Um, you've got all of the... Um, 
mini calendars to reference the last month and the month going forward. And then each one of the weeks will click you to the weekly planner that links with that. So for instance, I can go to eight and it's gonna take me to the week that is correlated with the weekly. Um, I did go ahead and mirror in uh, or include this year a daily planner. However, I wasn't sure how many people would want to utilize it and um, I didn't want anybody to feel the pressure of having to have something down every day. So it's there if you want it. It won't be linked to, but you can easily get to it by clicking that day. Um, there are 24 hours in the day and I toyed with it because I know a lot of these don't um, start until you know 6 a.m. and then they end around 10 a.m. Well, we're 24 hours of cross stitch, and I wanted you to be able to track whatever you're doing at any point in the day. Not everybody has those same schedules, so I do have it as a 24 hour spread. Um, I'd love feedback though for next year if it's something that you would rather have at like access to for all of the you know gear and dated. That's something that I can consider doing. Um, but like I said, they are available for you to duplicate right back here. Um, another thing to note, sometimes you'll see like at the end of the month, for instance, these last three days, um, there's going to, if you think of the week, so if three days fall in one month and four fall in the next, if you click here, it's going to be in the next month's storage. Um, so this way it goes to, you're still going to have it dated for you that, you know, January is there, but it's already in the February color scheme. Um, there is a daily habit tracking up top on all of the weekly formats too. Um, this kind of, this replace the one page weekly gives you a little bit more space to write. Um, it is a very light background on there, but the lines are there um, if you zoom in for them. Um, so that's available for you if you purchase the calendar function. Um, and so if you click month, it goes back to the beginning of that month. Week will take you to the first week in that month and day will click you to the day that you can then click through. Um, that down here is always gonna take you back to the cover of your planner. And then you're also gonna have this um, question mark that will always take you back to this page that's going to give you kind of the explanation and a little bit of a how-to. There's also some digital tips in here that just kind of indicate some of the little things that you might be um, looking for with the planner if you're new to digital planning. So I'm going to go ahead now and switch to the everything version uh, so that I can highlight to you what's available in that one. Um, like I said, 223 um, and uh, Monday or the monthly are all going to be the same in all of them. It, with the exception of calendars, you'll get perpetual calendar in the everything or the calendar spread. And in the trackers version, you will get that additional um, starts page and or the next to start and the additional FFO tracker. Um, if you're interested in tracking, oh, we'll go ahead and do the marathon one too. This is included in every one. Um, go ahead and I tried to think of some questions that we get often about 24 hours of cross stitch. So those are there. A little bit of a background on our journey and why we do 24 hours. The dates for this year's marathons are there. Um, there is a planning page for you to go ahead and, and mark down any of your planners. Again, a slight difference to the planner last year that was digital. Um, I had all four versions in here and the divider was there. I felt like it was just a little clunky. Um, so if you've done two marathons and you're ready to go for a third, just go ahead and duplicate this page and you can in use that as your planning portion. Um, I've also got my, your marathon tracker where you can go ahead and track down what, how your marathon went as well as a reflection page. Um, you can rate your marathons now. I believe that is new this year. Um, and I did add in the recipe cards to this section because a lot of us share recipes and what we're going to eat and things like that. So I felt like this would be a good place to, to store those. You're also gonna have that to-do section, notes, and a photo album available for you in the marathon section. With tr stash, this is where you're really gonna get into the nitty gritty of what you have in your um, in your stash. What do you have? What do you keep? What do you use in your stitching that you wanna make sure you have access to? So in here, you're gonna see several different things. You've got your fabric. Um, you could, this is just to list out what is in your, your stash. Um, I also include this fabric grid. This was new last year. Um, I utilize a grid like this when I'm thinking about a cut that is a random size. So what I would do is I would say, okay, the size, maybe it's a piece that's, um, you know, 20. Go ahead and draw this in. It's going to be 20 
by 20, but I have a cut out of it like this. I would probably use the highlighter and not actually the pencil to do this. But then I can see what my cut is, and then I can maybe plan out what, what pieces that are in my stash might work for using that. So that's what this, this page is indicated for. You've also got your floss. Now this is where you're, like I said, for that printable one, you're gonna have the different um, PDF packet that you can bring in. If you click here, Classic Colorworks, it's gonna take you to the Classic Colorworks inventory floss. Um, you can flip through to see, and then I, I included a, um, let's see. can also click for color and cotton and it will click through and show you the others that are there. Um, there should be a page at the end of each of them that kind of just gives you um, a few more that you can you can get to. Um, so you've got DMC, General Arts, NPI, and Weeks. Um, what I was just trying to say was that you will have one that does you can add additional floss there colors that may have been released since this uh, this list was compiled uh, I didn't want to change it if anybody was using the inventory list last year I didn't want to go ahead and alphabetically alter that because you can um, use the highlight tool or the capture tool um, so if I have something written in last year's planner and say I had you know I was tracking how many I had of each of these and I wanted to easily just transfer that into this year's you can open last year's planner lasso this and just hit copy and then you'll be able to bring it into this year's planner so it, it all is still some it, the the same setup as last year's in order for you to be able to do that um, then you also have to track your patterns the patterns, these used to all be clickable, but again, this is if you're utilizing it. I, I wasn't really sure how many people are using this to really track their stash. Um, I tend to go for more of a spreadsheet because it's easier to uh, sort, um, but if you're utilizing this, this is a functional way to kind of go through. So how I would recommend it being used is that you're going to maybe highlight um, what letter you're tracking here write down what plant uh, what patterns you have from a and then at duplicate the page to go on for the rest of the letters of the alphabet and then just swipe through to get through to the rest of them um there is a frames inventory list this is new for this year um, this page is going to give you the option to write down what frames you have and then if you see you've got numbers here the second page is going to give you that option to put a photo of it. So maybe you want to write, okay, the frame I have listed in number one is going to have this photo here for me. Um, this page and then these next three are also only for the digital planner because they are photo heavy. Um, so needle minder stash, maybe you want to take some pictures to remember where you've got your needle minders stored. Um, and project bag stash, also a little spot to put what shops you've gotten them at. And then at the last section is going to give you that shopping list so that you can keep track because we all know we need to add to our stash whenever we can. Your extras section is going to start with a projects page. I redesigned the projects page this year. I forgot to pull over. So it matches, I'm going to try to show you this, it matches up exactly with the projects cards that are also available in the Etsy shop. Um, these come at, in a pack where you get a page for uh, this color and then there is one page for each color of the color code that works along with the 24 hours. Um, they are designed to be printed double sided so you can record the dates that you're stitching on the back. And then you can record all of the project details up here. Like I said, I did change the project page layout to match so that it would be um, a little bit more consistent for you. So you can go ahead. This is another spot to add those pictures in. And um, I like to add my starting picture and then um, update it with my ending picture once I finish the project. There is a photo album. This first page, it's kind of similar to that frames inventory where you can um, go ahead and just put down what project it is. And then if you flip to the next page, that's where you're going to be able to put those progress photos in. Um, duplicate this as many times as you need.
need, um, but I like to see a project grow. So I, I wanted the availability to track one project at a time and really see what it's going to be growing as. New this year, we have a retreats tracker. Um, so you can write down what retreats you may be going to, whether you've paid your deposit or how your hotel is booked or if you're booking a flight um, and your deadlines and, and your packing list and notes and reminders. So that, that is new for you this year. Your gifts page is gonna give you a section to do gifts received and gifts stitched. There is a new Sal program page in here as well this year. Um, this is for you to be able to record those multi-release Sal's that are maybe coming out once a month. Um, I know some of them, like the Country Cottage Year Animals last year, a year in the woods, I think. Um, each one was a different month and a different release date, so you would have to purchase them separately. So here you can record um, the release dates that they're coming out, if you've purchased it, if you've stitched it, and any notes that you want. Um, this to me is like, I like to, when I have a multi-release, I tend to like to have it on the same fabric or the same size or do that kind of stuff. So it would give me a spot to write down um, any notes that might be applicable to everything that's coming in or, or dates that you need to pay the invoices, whatever you think. Um, there is still the stitch along tracker. This would be utilized if you're going to be stitching with a friend um, on a project together. You can keep track of those notes. There's a floss tube notes section where you can just write down what channel you're watching, episodes, projects to remember, and any notes. And you have your contacts. This is similar to the pattern page where you can go ahead and highlight and duplicate as you need. And then you've got the miscellaneous, which this would be to add in any of your other trackers that you're utilizing. I went ahead and also added a reading tracker that is there for you. Um, so that is that is kind of all of the contents that are there. Like I said, each month is color coded and all of the color coding of things that I put out matches. So I am working on a kit list. Um, I know I use them a lot in my 222 and people have been asking all year and I just haven't had a chance to sit down and do it. Now that the planner is done, it's freed me up a little bit. So I'm going to be doing that for you. So those will be available as well that will kind of be it. They're a smaller version of the project cards. It's four to a page instead of just the, um, just the one uh, or two. I'm sorry, there are two project cards available per page. Um, so yes, and I would love feedback this year. Like um, one of the things I've kind of been thinking about is maybe we want to have an inventories, um, a separate inventories journal that you want to just cap that's not date related so that you can keep track. But I, I feel like there's not enough content yet for that stash section to grow too much more. So if you can let me know, like I, I'm pretty basic with the things I stitch with, but maybe there are other things that I can envision um, creating some trackers for. I'd love to be able to do that for you guys. Um, and yeah, I, I tried to just be as intuitive with it as possible this year and really tried to make it easier to customize. I felt like last year's with all my duplicative pages and things like that was more just how my mind worked. Um, and I wanted to get away from that and be a little bit how you guys are going to be working. Um, one other question that has come up about the printable version. Um, I do did say that it is a two page, so I'll pull it up on here just so you can see um, see that again. It is a two page spread. Um, each page is its own page though. So it's gonna print, one of these will print on an eight and a half by 11 page. It's not two on one eight and a half 11 by on a, like a landscape layout. It is set to be like this. Um, so I hope that's clear. Uh, it was just easier to get screenshots of both pages together. And just like I was mentioning now, this is the Monday version. So you'll see that this has a Monday start for everything. Um, and it does in the, the planner as well. So I, um, I am looking forward to filling mine up. I, I've started a little bit. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you what I have in so far. I'm, I've gone in and I'm starting to think of my focus pieces for the month. I've decided to do a focus piece that I want one of my really big projects uh, for each month and then also a big project that I just started last year. So I'm trying to think of one that was existing before my whole 222 whips debacle journey, whatever it is that I've gotten myself into, um, and <laughs> going forward then one that I did start last year. Um, so that's what I'm utilizing this page for. 
And then I've also started to fill in my ABC challenge. Um, I think I'm going to be using my ABC as my um, my Stitch Madness, what I do for, for March. Um, so I think I'm going to give myself these 26 projects are ones that I want to finish this year. So each one will get stitched on for a day in March. Um, I went through and I was able to identify... Um, 26 that all have different designers and then that will give me five extra projects that I can start for madness that will be unrelated to um, the alphabet section so that that's where I'm kind of at with the filling of mine in um, I, again I hope it's helpful I, I really wanted to make these as easy as to use as possible. Please let me know any questions or things that I am not being clear on uh, and I will go ahead and try to sort all of those out. Um, but yeah, I, I wish you all well in your planning uh, for 2023 and hope that you um, find some inspiration to, to guide your stitching and help you kind of embrace those moments where we can be random, but maybe need to be a little bit more organized about it. So um, keep making those X's and I'm hoping to be back soon with a uh, update, get you caught up on where I'm at in my 222 journey. So thanks for watching today. I'm going to get back to stitching and I will talk to you later. Bye.